Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. It's um, um, welcome to the Bells Balls Bills Trustee Regular Meeting. It's Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. Despite what your agendas might see, uh, say you for that, 6.02 in the evening. We're down here at the lower, Town Hall Lower Theater. I'd like to call the meeting to order. We do not have any minutes for Tuesday, October 11th, 2022. Our um, clerk was sick, um, so we will probably be, have two sets of, at the next meeting, our next regular meeting. Moving on, additions to the agenda for routine administrative matters and or pressing matters that will require ratification at a future meeting. No, I do have one issue with a uh, water bill, but I'll bring it to you at your next meeting. It's just a, okay. a cleanup matter. So it wasn't worth it. Had not been, it didn't make it in time for this agenda. So we're going to keep it. Okay. Back. And do we, do we anticipate having an executive session? Tonight we do. Yes. We do. Okay. All right. Uh, public any public comment? Anyone? I have a public comment. I'd oh, like to bring. Yes, could you tell us your name for the record? Sure, my name's Kelsey Baker, and I'm a resident of Seven Center Street in Bellows Falls. Um, I just wanted to bring it to your attention the status of one Center Street. The property has been deteriorating for a long time, but recently there's been some pretty drastic changes. Uh, there seems to be truckloads of items being unloaded outside all around the house. Um, the foundation, which was failing, has failed. It's caved in and there's pieces of it in the driveway. And it seems like he's barricading um, that part of the house with items and debris to try and maybe camouflage that. There's also, to my understanding, no sewer or water to the property, but he is residing there. And at times, his five-year-old grandson, it appears, is also there staying. Um, and I just, I just ask if there's anything that can be done or if, you know, encourage everyone to maybe just take a look at it and see what our options are. I appreciate your comments. I'm sure that having heard them, they'll be forwarded on to the health officer, the managers here. Um, there'll be something. Yeah, point. we're aware. We have a long history with the folks at that property. And as, as board remembers, there was a health court order that was pursued and ultimately unsuccessful previously. So we're going to have to look at another strategy. There are some other ways that we can approach the problem there. So those are underway. Right. Great. The only concern or disappointing thing just for the board is if you look at your list of properties that are potential tax sale properties, yeah. That property is a tax sale location, but unfortunately it is currently in the DHFA status. So it's on so as to whether or not we'll ever get that to the point where it might go through a tax sale. Okay. My my concern also is just before we had a pretty terrible rat problem because of all the trash and debris and the amount of debris that's accumulating leads me to believe that it's not <laughs> unlikely for it to occur again. Well, we really thank you and appreciate your uh, letting us know what's going on up there. Um, yes. The town is aware of it. Um, there are only so many things we can do with a property that is um, on a tax sale list, but is um, but it's also holding for funding from the state. So um, they will look into it. Um, do it and do what limited things that we can do, and I do appreciate that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, um, any other public comment? I'm sorry, I keep putting my head back there, I can't see, I can't see them. Uh, manager's report. Sure, so a couple things I did hand out to the board just the updated uh, tax sale list. This list that I'm working now with uh, Josh Stern from Masuko and Stern, and he's going to be working with a, um, the next step in this is we're going through a uh, title search. So as soon as I get that information back on the 25 eligible properties, we will then bring, bring that back to the boards for conversation about 
what the dates will be from there for notification and ultimately a set a date for a tax sale. So we don't have a, you don't have a timeline. <clears throat> I don't have a specific, as soon as I get from the uh, title searcher, when that is all completed, then I can, uh, then I can finish off with the rest of the time and give the board a full report. So I'm hoping to know something by our joint board meeting at the end of November. Okay. Full schedule. Other, other things? Um, just for the board's information, you know, we've been working with Efficiency Vermont on um, issues surrounding our dryer processing for sludge and uh, biosolids. We are now at a point where we had a visit from one of the technicians from the manufacturer. So we were able to um, get uh, some of our, our fan and, and some of our other issues resolved. So now we're at a point where we're going to have Efficiency Vermont come back and we're going to be doing a uh, very specific study. So we're gonna basically run the machine for 30 straight hours. They, they have a, a series of um, additional monitoring that they do. And then based on that 30 hour burn, they'll be able to come back and tell us what potential programs we might be eligible for for energy efficiency and other types of savings. So we're scheduling that with them now. And as soon as we get the results and they give us some information, I'll get back to the board on what we might be potentially eligible for. We continue with that process. But uh, the last thing is uh, Wade was also at the meeting. So maybe he can give the board his perspective on some of the conversations at the last fire equipment committee. We did talk about the fire feasibility study. Um, going forward with a scope for that. So the next meeting, we're going to have a follow-up meeting of the equipment committee. I believe it's the second Monday of November. And at that meeting, all of the members will have input as to a scope of services. And then ultimately we will go out and look for a consultant and get a price to see if we can get um, the study underway prior to uh, you know, the end of the year. So we should hopefully have that information um, later on, probably by the time we have our meeting and we go out into the marketplace and get proposals, we probably won't hear anything back till after Thanksgiving, um, you know, right before the holidays. So we'll follow up and let you know. Okay. You know if there's anything else you wanted to bring up forward from that meeting? No, the only, um, if I remember the process correctly, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but so once we generate that list of what we want to see out of the study, that'll go back to each board. Right. We so they can at least look at it, say, yeah. Yeah, know. before we put it on the street, we, we did discuss it and make sure both boards had a chance to see it. But I won't have to wait to go to a joint board meeting. No. Just the boards that, as their next general meetings come up. If we get it done, if there's not a lot of changes and we're in a good position, we might be able to have it on the joint board, but we'll see. Because we're not meeting until second Tuesday, second Monday. And then I think the board meeting is that fourth Tuesday or fifth Tuesday. So we'll see. Well, we would meet the, yeah, I was going to say we would, then we'd be meeting on the 8th, which is the day after, right? I think right. that's correct. Yeah, so our next okay. meeting is the 8th. So we might be we might hear something like that. Thank you. All right. Anything else? So no, that was it. Moving on to the agenda. The first thing is the community barbecue update. Everybody has paperwork. Of course, it's not apparently not completely updated because besides <coughs> uh, the on behalf of the cost of the water and beans and other things that's that uh, Wade spent money on. And so I will redo that and send that to everybody. And but I, what I would like to know is if, and that would change this a bit, uh, that uh, I'd like a motion to see if I can uh, re get reimbursed by our village account. I just want to make sure that we're all in agreement about it. James, James gave you a verbal email. But, um, if I take this additional $20 that is given me and subtract it from that, making the reimbursement total 223.37. dollars 37 Now we send that out. This is something we want to do now, and you want me to wait until the next meeting. I say I'll make a motion <laughs> to allow the, for you to move, move that request to the finance department. Now, two twenty-three thirty-seven. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> discussion. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And I have seen it. So <laughs> just because that's the one I have to do. Um, it was, it was, I, I thought it was great participation from the fire department. We had so many first responders, both fire and police. Uh, more trucks than apparently we'd ever seen in quite a while um, came to the community, but there weren't as many um, citizen participation as I expected. But then again, there were other things going on in the community, like the Philano Fest and stuff, which might have had an impact on uh, on the number of things. So we served because Brent was there and did a lot of work, and I have to thank him and everyone else who's participating. All the people at the at the fire department, all my all my trustees. Um, Citizens, there was a couple of citizens who participated. Brett Lisi was there. Geez, he's you know the champion barbecue, and he knows all knows all that stuff. So we served 130 hamburgers and ate 100 hot dogs. Um, so no, like about, only about half as many as I anticipated because it had been since 2019 the last we did, and I thought we would have a great deal more people, but it didn't turn out that way. Despite it was a nice you know, nice day. Um, we had beans from Brent Lee side, plus the ones that were made by the fire department that we had to take care of, plus there were cookies and other things. Um, all the additional food, remaining food, except for the, the raw burgers, hamburger, hot dogs, and guts, which were credited by Brent um, from the store, went to the fire department, um, leftover water, um, leftover meals and things to keep you know, um, incoming uh, first responders fed. <laughs> I think you stuffed your, stuffed your kitchen. Um, quite a bit, and um, but and it, and it was still uh, still fun. It was still nice. Um, I would have liked more assistance to come. We could consider if we want to do it again. The following year, depending on who wants to head that. I don't know. We might be, might not. Um, but um, I thank all everyone for their participation. Um, for this. Thank you for having it up. Yeah. It was it was fun. A little burns, but that's part of the course. Um, Scott was there. He he helped us in grilling too. But Brent really took over. I mean, yeah. he was there. I just kept throwing him on and adding the sauce. And we were running on cheese. That's it. With Jeff and I were runners. We were just basically yeah. bus boys. Yeah. Well, that was good. We, we need, you know you need that. Yeah. You know, everybody else is doing something else. And yeah. So, Sounds all good though. Yeah. And, fun. Uh, and we kept it going until there wasn't anything else to make because there wasn't a line anymore. So. It was it was wonderful. Um, I wish more people had been there, and hopefully for next year we can see how that goes. So thank you, everyone. So that is it. <coughs> the motion. I'll redo this, send it out to everybody, and then uh, we'll go on. Next item on the agenda is an update on the ordinance renew, review of the rental housing, and the um, the fire inspector is here today. So yeah, Landon Wheeler is here. So Landon's our regional manager that we work with. Um, on an ongoing basis with all sorts of housing related issues. But specifically in this case, he took this, this draft from our, our work and had some people from the state go through some of the areas that they were concerned with. And so those areas we did, we did um, highlight in yellow and those were problems or issues that we wanted to try to resolve so that we could get a, a clean set for the ordinance to come back and maybe adopt the amended ordinance and then work with Landon's office on a uh, proposed you know, memorandum of agreement so we can start to do some implementation. So with that as a background, um, Landon, I don't know if you want to jump in or have any specific comments or... I'm here to answer any questions that the board has or okay. the trustees have. Anyone? Anything? I'm really good at question answering. So <laughs> ask away. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll start. Yeah. So where, where does this stand with your office as we speak? I don't understand the question. Where does what stand? The, this ordinance. I mean, the, there is no ordinance. There is no municipal agreement. And there hasn't been a municipal agreement with Bellows Falls for seven years. Yeah. So how do we? So I think move this forward. Right. Yep. So I need to see how you're going to enforce the codes. I need to see communication between the uh, employees of the town of Bellows Falls and my staff because it would be a limited MOU. 
to just existing buildings. So co-working and providing referrals and references uh, is a very important item. Um, and I obviously I, I need to see uh, ordinance that has the updated statutes. It doesn't prohibit inspections in any capacity or hinder somebody from getting an inspection in any capacity. And I can't turn my authority over to a town manager. So that portion of the ordinance would also have to be addressed. Uh, 20 DSA, which is a state statute that governs my authority, also governs my ability to provide an MOU to a community. Uh, and it's, it's all outlined in regards to what we can do and what we can't do. So I reviewed this town ordinance and there's actually specifications in that ordinance that would prohibit somebody from receiving an inspection. And, and I can make it clear, I'll never support an MOU that would hinder somebody from receiving my services. And an MOU is providing my services. It's at a local level. Um, and that's a very important distinction for the trustees. Can you explain if it, why there has not been an MOU for seven years? This has nothing, having nothing to do with this ordinance. Yep. So the MOU was uh, uh, was not renewed after the former fire chief uh, left, mm -hmm. um, and that's outside of that. I was not a regional manager at the time, and that was handled by Bruce Martin. I was uh, involved in reviewing documentation, uh, so I can speak to that. Um, we weren't comfortable with maintaining an MOU with the community at the time. That's um, we have one uh, before where there were some specifics that you could um, explain, or perhaps Sean has some comment about this. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out why we yep. didn't have one just because our chief left. Yep. So there's only 12 MOUs in the entire state of Vermont, just mm -hmm. to put this into perspective. And Bellows Falls is the only community that had an MOU that no longer has an MOU. Uh, in the entire state. So out of 241 or 43 communities, there's really not a lot of MOUs. Mm -hmm. um, municipal agreements are can be very difficult to maintain because there's a lot of training that's involved. There's a lot of documentation that's involved. And the way this ordinance is written, there's a lot of inspections that would be mandated by your ordinance. Uh, and that would be very hard for a group of people to maintain, never mind a single individual. So why? Oh, uh, no, no. Um, yeah, I don't really think my question was answered, but that's that's fine. Go ahead. No, you can. Add, I, I, no, no. Let's let wait, wait, yeah. please, let wait. Going around. Yeah, I think. Yeah, did you want to say Yeah, did you want to say something? I think part of the reason is that once she was left, there were no certified fire inspectors in in, in fire. That's why I think that was one of the factors. Maybe more than that. Wait. So, if there if we have twelve other municipalities around the state that have these, why can't we just get like a sample or two from them and you know make it make it work? For us? You know what I'm saying? I mean, why not? Yeah. So copy and pasting anybody else's documents is never a good idea. I'm not saying copy and paste. I'm saying get that as a sample as like, um, and use that as a format to help progress this along. So there's items that are in that document that are in front of you that mix two different, actually multiple different state statutes and S-181 is a brand new statute that the Division of Fire Safety is now passed with, which is the health inspector rule. And this document doesn't cover that and no existing MOUs would cover that. So to answer your question, you are welcome to reach out to anybody that you'd like to grab an MOU and to get it some examples and um, and by all means, uh, I think that's a great idea. So this ordinance goes beyond fire safety. Absolutely. Um, my understanding is that the effort that's been made locally within the ordinance committee. Um, one of the goals is not to have redundancy. Um, so I guess 
moving this forward was because of delays in the state not having inspectors to be able to do both local inspections and the other communities and kind of rental housing inspectors um, sooner rather than so I guess where I'm just trying to yeah, I mean that was usually the goal. Um, so S one eighty one hasn't passed. I'm sorry. You, you listed it as Senate Bill one eighty one. That means it hasn't passed yet. No, it did pass. One eighty one is the uh, revised version. Okay. Let me ask if I may. You mentioned earlier, and correct me if I'm wrong. You mentioned that we were the only community that had uh, the MOU. Um, Wade earlier the conversation here just a few moments ago referred to 12 other communities. What's the difference for those MOUs you're talking about with state agencies or organizations or other types of groups or organizations? Or? No, there are 12 MOUs where different communities represent and enforce the same statutes that I do for the state. Uh, they have, those balls had an MOU uh, almost a decade ago and they no longer have an MOU uh, during that transition. I was a, a field inspector at the time and I've, I've spoken to that. So the town of Bell, or the village town of Bellows Falls has had an MOU. They no longer have an MOU. The, uh, did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there are 12 other communities that, that do maintain an MOU. I think you said it was the, we were the only one that had one and no longer no has. longer has. That was the distinction where we were. Right. Anyone else has any other comments on this? Scott's already said that we work together. To that. Right. So I, th I think the goal here would be if to afford some uh, agreeable is we would take Landon's uh, cross outs and then work on reshaping the ordinance. So that it would pass at least that initial review at the state level, and then bring that back to the board for adoption, and then bring it back to Landon and his group to then see if we can work towards the MOA that we've been discussing. So are yeah. they are they in fact cross ups? They're not. I mean, you're more than welcome to uh to review the language. I mean, the items that are highlighted are pretty pretty blatant. If I utilize the statement of we can never withhold services from anybody who calls and asks that we have jurisdiction over. Uh, that's the vast majority of those line items. And also we wouldn't pertain the ability or we wouldn't uh, extend the authority to have a variance or waiver uh, granted by uh, a non-fire marshal. Most of our communities uh, will reach out to the state and will go through our variance process for any variances or waivers that are requested. Um, and if it has to do with accessibility, I, I'm the chairman of the access board, so I would, I would see that documentation anyway. I guess leading through this with the highlights, my, you know, obviously they were items of concern, but it wasn't clear exactly what the concerns were or where there might be some um, area to, to work or rework. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have written a response to these. That would no, I don't typically write a response and I don't typically rewrite a uh, town ordinance for a community as it's a local document that should be produced by this board, not by the yeah, no, no, no. state. I guess I'm not suggesting that you write the ordinance, but the ordinance committee to have some guidance when they're reviewing. To so understand so what's wrong. Understand yeah. what's wrong so that we can shape it to right both law and the needs and desires of the community. But right now, it's to me, it's it's uh, it highlights concern, but it doesn't direct me. Um, I'm not one who is well versed in savings and everything else. And I want to, you know, maybe I should be, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm going to caution you. I'd be more than happy to, to give you some comments or give the board back to the town manager and the fire chief some comments. But I'm going to be extremely cautious because I'm not going to provide enough terminology that it could be perjured or it could be utilized. 
uh, as a written document. So I write That's I write great. all of our our rules for the Division of Fire Safety. I I do a lot of the uh, rulemaking and rule adoption process, including uh, statute. So I don't want to um, misrepresent. Um, the Division of Fire Safety by saying everything that's highlighted can't make it there. It, it, if there's something that's highlighted that you really think should be there, then by all means, submit it. Um, it's my job to review it, review the statutes, review the information that's in the document, and see if it's going to be something that we can work with. And so would you be available to the ordinance committee when they need to review it? Chuck, because sure. the planning zoning person was one who initially initiated it and then we went through the stages at that point. But um, the technical language is something that has there clearly has to be tools. So, um, I'm not the chair of the ordinance committee, but I will relay this information. So yeah, I will make myself available to uh, whoever would like some assistance. And as Jeff is saying, the prop the our difficult level of difficulty here is you highlighted there are things highlighted, but that doesn't explain what's wrong with them in order for us to craft them differently. So, yeah. 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 Okay. I think you definitely give you some feedback. Okay. Great. Are we set? Anybody else have anything else about this? No, that would that would be good. I'm just quite a, I'm a little frustrated because this has been going on for how long? A year. Over a year. Right. A couple of years in drafting, and then yeah, yeah, they take a while. Yeah. And I know not all of that's on. Oh no, it's it's state sense. No, 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 certainly on our end. Right. Yeah. Cost some between, between and COVID and yeah, between the two parties and everything else, we just want to get this off the ground and up and moving because it's in the best interest of the citizens here in the community and you know, as a whole. Yeah, let's talk about that if we can. Uh, so, um, my timeline is always going to be respective of the community, but looking for the best. Uh, available outcome for the people that I serve. Uh, and that will always be my response. So I'll never be rushed. I'll never be pressured. I will absolutely take all the appropriate steps to make sure that it's the right thing to do for the people that I serve. Um, but that being said, I fully support an existing building MOU um, being done at the local level with the resources that you have available. But I will also add to that that uh, that timeline that's outlined in that ordinance is extremely aggressive for a single individual, and I don't think that that's uh, well. I I have eleven staff, and I know all of their capabilities, and I can tell you that the this would tax tax uh, an individual greatly. I appreciate that. Yeah. Did, did Mr. DeRocha speak to you about the situation of the old salt with us? Nope. No. Uh, he mentioned that somebody approached him at a retirement yeah. and uh, he said to reach out to Landon. <laughs> Is there more? Yeah, but I won't get into it. We just want to move this forward. Just want to just want to make this work for everybody. Okay. Quite honestly. Um, you know, your department, the fire department, certainly the, the folks that live here in the village. Okay. If there is nothing further, we can move on to the next agenda. I want to thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. Down, I appreciate it. So who is going to be my point of contact? Oh, well, so me and, me and Sean and I will work together. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be in touch yeah. with you. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Night. Our next item on the agenda is a schedule for review of ordinance committee proposals. And I presume that's part of the Well, I asked Josh to come yeah. because you know Josh is in the middle of picking up and putting pieces back together from the loss of Ray. And one of the things that was on the plate was trying to come through a legal review of the uh, ordinance committee work that has been ongoing for the last for three years. <laughs> Okay, maybe years. longer, but <laughs> it has been. Yes, we, we started before COVID and now, yeah, here we are. So. so, with that in mind, I thought since we had Josh here for some other things, at least we had an opportunity to see if there's a way we could put a schedule together that he could work yeah. with. 
Because I don't know, we we never got any response from Ray right. over the last year uh, within that time frame on where he was with any of those. So I see you added the fire alarm safety ordinance here. That was just one. Just, just one of them. Right. Yeah. Right. And that was basically work, reworked by uh, Sean. Right. Uh, because he had the expertise and the knowledge. Like, for instance, we haven't touched the water or the sewer ones because those are some really specific um, te technical information that we don't have. Right. So we haven't touched those. So I don't know where Ray was with any of that. Maybe Josh might know where he was with any of that. So I'm, I'm actually not sure where there's so there were specific ordinances that ray was already reviewing is that correct we sent one yes yeah and i don't know i never got any emails back saying i got this these changes or these drafting updates or so i'm not sure where it stood i mean he might not have done anything with them they might have just yeah, been not. sitting waiting um so so this and i hate to give this answer but this may have to be a let me check and get back to you no no um, i think that from yeah. the first response <laughs> uh, so let let me check um, right. but if you if there are any specific ordinances that you're aware of uh, that he has been reviewing or that were sent to him at least well um, i know the fire one was specifically um the one i included in the packet because yeah. sean had done right. the work and i know it had gone back to him and i just don't it, it just disappeared i'm pretty sure i sent you an email scott with all the ones that were we had done in there you i did. could just go find back and look for that right um because we were we had gotten we, pretty much the ordinance committee has not met in a few in some months because we were at that stage where we had submitted them to the manager yep. the manager had submitted them to ray and we were waiting that okay. was basically it so so we'll have to you know, go back and we'll have to it. review the ordinance yeah. committee to review the rental the, inspection. Yes, ordinance. exactly. So it's probably a good time to revisit and then right. touch base with Josh. Yeah, and at this point, I might need, even, we need, might need to them a member because we're not mm -hmm. sure where everybody is with this right now. Okay. So okay. I will certainly, I'll take a look at the fire ordinance in right. terms of. I mean, I mean, if I'm, he's done some work, the idea would be don't re reproduce it, but if right. he hasn't, then we'll start over. Yeah, yeah. we'll start over. Yeah, yeah. that's what we got, yeah. Right. But yes, I, I am happy and I, I should be able to get you at least a timeline this okay. week. Great. Thank you so much. Great. Sure. All right, our next item is proposing an ordinance for a ban on fires in parks. Um, there's some language here. So there's still some yeah. language basically from, yeah. from, this Burlington. Is from Burlington. Yeah. And the reason that we're trying to do this, we're also going to do the same thing with the town, is so that any of our current municipal spaces can be uh, can fall within these these guidelines so that we don't have people camping, making fires and generally living you know within the parks themselves um, right now there is really no it's, it's our ordinances are silent to that so yeah we have nothing about parks basically mm -hmm. except for the um, um oh god the village has one about um annoying not annoyances an ordinance that covers um bad behavior but it's just gen it's a general village one it has isn't specific to the parks and it has really has nothing about fire. There's fire arms, right. but not fire. So the goal here is I think to maybe have something for both. And it's just, it's a you know, it's fairly generic language there. There's not really much yeah. that we would have to change to it. Um, Pretty quite, simple. Yeah. yeah, we would just simply, you know, copy these and then, you know, have a public hearing and then ultimately adopt it. So that if we have to do enforcement, at least we have some legal way to do that. That's really the goal here is, yeah. to, is to be able to move people out of the parks if, if they are in fact doing some of these things, which has you know it's been a problem. It's it's the one I thought was interesting was nudity was prohibited. I, I was thinking, wait was, a minute, in Brattleboro, you I mean, I thought there was there wasn't a nudity no. prohibition as long as you didn't. I guess you touch could be nude in Brattleboro, but not in Burlington. So go figure. I guess. So, yeah. you know, for those who are so inclined, there you go. Now you know. Do you see Brad? I mean, that's pretty much, we've had a couple times in Dallas Falls. Oh, I know. But, uh, but usually it's, yeah. yeah. So I'm just saying, not open, the parks, but everywhere else. I'll I mean, throw that open to the board, depending on what your feelings are. You know, we could attach that with hitching horses to trees. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm sure we can talk about this at the end of November at the joint board meeting. Yes. Um, where the where the town would probably find most likely wanting to use the same language as the village would use, or it could be a town ordinance, which would just which would mean the village would need the. Well, that's what I was going to say. Wouldn't it be a? Yeah. Wouldn't it be more appropriate to be a town ordinance? Well, we have a couple of parks. Correct. Um, but we don't. Have, but the one where the particular area where the living has right. occurred this summer and fall is um is a is town. Which actually doesn't belong to them, but they're right. leasing it. Right. Which but I might yeah. think too that maybe we should extend this a little bit and talk about cemeteries because unfortunately we've yeah. people living mm -hmm. in the woods near the cemetery. Yeah, at yeah. some point I'm afraid we're gonna have people living along the grounds at some point. Yeah. And may and may well be, it's just it's not, you know, it's not that it's reviewed all the time. There's not always someone walking through and checking on it. Yeah, so it's it's a problem. And it's, you know, at least this gives us something to try and, and, and build. build yeah. So we could wait until the joint board meeting to discuss language. Well, with, sure. uh, if board you board. have any, yeah, to say they have any input or anything, on yeah. some of these other you know, items, it would be helpful to hear. I mean, Burlington was the one that had the, I mean, when I went looking, I couldn't seem to find anything that was any specific, otherwise specific in the state except for that. Yeah. Is there any parts and stuff? I don't know how successful that program really was because then they put them all in a tent city and that turned into a disaster and then they had to turn that up. And well, aren't they to... building tiny houses now? They're trying a unit on a certain particular street with multiple units. Yeah. And they haven't, they're just getting permission to do so. Well, they just got to clean out a pretty large camp, which was causing yeah. a lot of problems. So, we really, really should. Okay. So, we'll do that. If you guys have any comments or, you know, for the manager about that, we can send them along to him. Um, we have until the end of November. And at this point, I can see it looks cleared up at this point. There it was comes and goes. Of, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Today, yeah. It seems yeah. like recently it's not been. Hasn't been problematic recently. I had a I had a meeting with the um, new director of our place shopping center uh, yesterday morning. And we were talking about that particular individual and stuff. And it, uh, and anyway, um, seems to have moved into Walpole. You know, Walpole is fine. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. But the weather isn't going to get any better. True. Uh, number five is the notice for intent to bargain uh, and appointments for any PBA local 410 contract. So we had had this on, you guys remember, at the joint meeting, and then when Ray passed, we took it off. So now we are back. And we to have the village nominate the management representative to the negotiating team, as well as Josh is going to offer legal assistance as part of the negotiating process. So we I included him in the resolution as well. Did the select board make this decision? They did. Last week. Okay. So Peter was nominated, and right. Josh was approved as the legal okay. Well, again, I know that Jigs didn't want to do it <laughs> after last time, after last conversations. I'm more than willing. I don't know if anyone else has a has a desire. Burning desire. So Jigs did it last time. And yes, and the previous time I did it. And you did it prior to that. Yep, and I'm really happy to do it again. Um, having some experience kind of kind of helps. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's for sure. And having the time. That's the other thing. It's like being available for day meetings and long meetings that go on for hours. We have a pizza lunch and um, come back to it. You know, with a lot of caucusing. You know, <laughs> and, and guess what? He's a default. He has to be there. It's a significant time. <laughs> it is. That's the only thing I would caution. It's about. a lot of time. Yeah, it does need a few weeks of time. Yeah. But I, I'm happy to do that if someone wants to make a motion to do to make that selection. Yeah. Or nominate someone else. Well, I'll make the motion that we nominate the village president Deborah Wright uh, as our negotiator from the board of trustees to reference the uh, NEP, NEP VA local board of contract. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say before they say aye. 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 Does anything need to be signed on here? No, it's just. It's, it's just, just a form. No, I'll let them let the union know that our tech negotiate for November 1st. Okay. So they have to notify them by and then right. we'll right. schedule from there. Josh obviously will be our legal 
system for that as well. Mm -hmm. To be determined. So we'll be, probably have a strategy session at some point. Talk yeah, to the board that makes about, sense. Yeah, that's what our needs are. But we're probably a little ways away from doing that quite yet. Yeah, so. yeah. And you have, to, you have to notify, and then you have to what get a set a point, set a time with them to meet when they first meeting. What when you want the first meeting or when they once we, once yeah once I send them the intent, yeah. then we'll probably end up with some. Mm -hmm. dates and we'll go from that. And we have a for that. Yep. Um, next item is the wayfinding sign project in Robertson Mill, Robertson Paper Mill historic prop marker. So I want to bring this to the board's attention. Um, it's really just because of the visual impact. So there's a couple of things. You're going to see an interpretive kiosk, which is a fairly large um, sign going up on the corner of the old Robertson Paper site and it, it's a fairly it's a fairly large sort of metal sculpture and so i think it's going to be attractive but it'll be something that people will notice and then my question as to why it's there and it's part of part of the whole process of the cleanup and the historic uh, recognition of the previous use of that property um, as well as the, there's a second piece of this and that this is all coming through grant funding is that in the downtown they want to create some new signage to help sort of it's called wayfinding signage but you've seen them in other places it has you know listings of you know, here or there yeah here. here's where the park is and here's where this, yep. this you know, yep. here's so it's just a way to help people that aren't familiar with the community find their way and those are still being worked through and i'll bring you when a detail is available just so that you can see it because it'll be fairly prominent in places in the downtown and something that you'll certainly want to know about before it goes up. So, yeah, one of the things up, that had up at uh, at BLCT's training of the town fair this year, uh, there was a vendor who sells um, signage, banners, stickers, posters, whatever it is you want to um, find finding places, place mats, you know, stuff that goes on walls. They had those. Um, Oh God, what is it? You stand with your phone. Oh, they have QRs on. QR, QR yeah. codes that you that would work that would actually work great in helping people wayfind. Yes. So hopefully that's integrated in that. Um, but there are other ways that we could do it here in, our, in the municipality that would help that as well. So I I think I forwarded that stuff up to Gary. I, yeah. I did my job. But uh, it's probably not as it may not be as big as the sign that's currently on the property, which has been knocked down once or twice. This will be noticeable because of the steel. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure it'll look better. So. so, just wanted to bring it to your attention. So, if people questioning or are asking, you can just have some knowledge beforehand. Great. That's the one in Shillen? Yes. Part of us, right? Or yeah, they're still they're trying to get it in before winter. So. Oh, so they already got the grant? Yes. Okay. So, the, the structure is, I mean, some of the pictures I've had, the sign is being fabricated. So, yeah, I think they're just about ready to go in. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, let's see. Review agenda items for next meeting, November 8th. Do we have anything on there already? Uh, just that one item I told you about with the water billing. Yeah, the water bill. Yep. Not a big deal. Okay. Any ideas? Send them to along the spot. Myself, joint board um, is next, and and let, let's be clear here: is this going to be a tri board meeting every time? I don't know. That's really for the boards to decide. There seems to be a mixed opinion about how that. I know, but the joint be. board doesn't meet pre meet to talk about that before scheduling the meeting, right? And then by that time, the Sachs Turbo Board usually weighed in, or Amy has, and asked to be. I mean, there's pieces of the, you know, especially if we're talking about fire services and some stuff that are sort of all the community's involvement. That's mm -hmm. sort of what was part of the genesis of this, that and the ARPA. But it's, I, I think it's probably up to you, you know, for all three boards. Is, right. is, it, is it a good use of time? And, mm -hmm. and, 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 it, and it depends. I mean, some, right. I know I've gotten complaints from at least one trustee. Who said, why are we listening to this because it belongs on the town side? <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. It's like, why are we taking this amount of time? When something's, but there are sometimes there are some items that come in 
it's there's never no never zero value in listening to some of the things that are impacting us. Everything the town does impacts yeah. the village. Yeah, yeah. I, try, I try to make them relevant so that it's not yeah. just a yeah. It's you know. an, I think it's just a complaint, but um, the board the, the board should make have that discussion. It's one we've never had. Yeah, it's so. something. Either that needs to be on the twenty ninth, on the meeting on the twenty ninth. Uh, so that's scheduled for the 29th, and I'm sure there'll yes. be a great deal of things, including things like perhaps a tax sale and all the stuff. That will come yes. And the fire. Yep. And all that. So again, any ideas? Send those out to Scott and myself. Um, review or and approve orders, bills, and warrants. It looks like we've all signed them. I need a motion. Our motion to approve the order of bills and warrants to circulate. Right. And a second. All second. Okay. Any further discussion on the order of bills and warrants? Here we none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Uh, uh, okay. Um, other business. Um, we do have an executive session coming up. I don't believe there will be any action taken. No, there's no, there action, no action taken. Just... Um, so, any other business, Scott? No. Wait. Uh, I just have one thing. It's, I guess it's more a town thing than a village, but. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to pass it, make the. Uh, the lights out in the square that there's like 18 of them that are out yes we we have a contractor who is scheduled to come in and replace we have a weird of course we, we right we have these weird ballasts so he has the oh, replacement yeah. ballast so you can put regular bulbs on them to switch out the bulb so we're trying to get him in here to get those replaced before we hit daylight savings and I, all that i passed this on the end a couple weeks ago yeah but i talked to the people at town fair oh yeah from efficiency Vermont, mm -hmm. and there's credits and incentives for that project. Oh, so I just wanted to pass that on. Yep. To you. So I know that um, I know that BIFTA is scheduling the poinsettias and stuff for right. the beginning of November. Um, will the valves and stuff be done before then? I just wonder. Well, he had ordered some materials, so that was a bit of an issue, and now yeah. it's just a question of getting him in here with his bucket truck. So He's, you know, he's made a commitment to the, the guy that we've been working with to be here. So well, I remember Andy telling, I guess he was telling me that it was, he was going to be, a, you know, not cheap to get them all up to speed. A couple thousand yeah. pieces to swap them out. Right. And he said there's like 17 or 18 of them. I think right now there's at least a dozen and there might be more like 15 now. Yeah. I think the last time I saw so a town fair when I, were you in the efficiency remote one? I, I thought mm, you were, but maybe not. Anyway, no, I, I think so. Yeah. They were talking about municipal street lights and one mm -hmm. thing or another. So I, I inquired about that. And she said, Oh, yeah, by all means, let us know. And then um, we certainly incentives for that. So, yeah, might as well save some money. That's so. all I got. Okay. Um, yeah. No, we're good. Yeah. No, sir. Thank you. And Halloween is next Monday. So there will be trick or treaters out. So with the lights, make sure you've got your light porch lights on. That's what I think to give them. Oh, I see Betsy's hands yeah, up. I was gonna say hand this one up. Hey Betsy, what's up? I think you have to unmute. Hi there. There. I there you go. Didn't want to interrupt. I was just waiting patiently. Um, I don't believe the poinsettias and snowflakes will be in the way um because they're you know one side of the lamppost and they could access the other, but I definitely, we don't want to put them up if they're going to be in the way. So I guess right. we'll just no, make sure we talk about that. Yeah. yeah, I got your schedule the other day. So we're we're trying to get a, a confirmed date so we don't have a problem. Okay, cool. I mean, you both have volunteered, but I also want to include you for exactly this reason, I guess. I didn't know, but... <laughs> <laughs> Cook burgers, climb ladders, whatever. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> whatever the need, the task is. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, just just mentioning that uh, for everyone to be safe and make sure you get plenty of light with them um, in the streets. I mean, I don't know if there's going to be rain on Monday or not, but but it's an odd day for trick or treaters, yeah. right? So as soon as your work day's ended, boom, they're out. So I have to rush downstairs. <laughs> Again, um, making sure because they parents it's getting dark about six o'clock, so parents are going out earlier with their kids. They don't want us to keep them out late. School day next day, so um, just be safe out there. Make sure you have plenty of light. 
All right, so that we are on to executive session. Um, you've got the cards over there. Yes. Okay, why don't you have to yeah. Does that side need two motions for 12? I think for contractual. Uh, this says, <laughs> wow, confidential attorney client communications. Right. Okay, so yeah, you do. We do need two motions for that. Motions. Yep. So for, do, do the first motion. I move. Yeah. I move to find the premature general public knowledge of. Uh, a confidential confidentially well confidential attorney client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body uh, clearly placed on this probably a substantial disadvantage by negotiating strategy and litigation etc okay and to include and to include the manager and the manager and attorney josh stern okay I'm sorry. Thank you. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, we're just gonna head for this. Okay. Yes, appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Good night, guys. Good night. Need a second. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor, please take your time by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. And then second motion, please. I move that the board enter executive session to discuss. Uh, we discuss them. Uh, it's number twelve. Just say confidential. No, confidential attorney. Same as number twelve. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Confidential <laughs> attorney client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body uh, under provisions of Title I, yeah. Section 313A, one of the Vermont statutes. Give me a second. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Clearly, we don't go into another executive session, so that's a good thing. So, thank you, everyone. Thank we you. are now in going into executive session. We do not anticipate.